Hey everyone, this is Tara, the Painted Cicada, and you are live with me tonight for my mixed media demo. I'm going to give everybody just a second to get on. We are here to make Peppermint Carol. Welcome, welcome. I'm just going to take a second and make sure I am live in all the right places. All right, wonderful. It looks like people are hopping on. So before we begin, um, I'll go over all the supplies. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Kathy. Yay. Okay. People are, are getting on, so everything must be good. Um, I'm going to go over the supply list, but um, I mentioned before all of my paintings, all of my lessons, um, but this is especially true for mixed media. You can substitute. Um, so if I'm using a stencil and you have a stamp, that's fine. If I um, am using a different color red than you, that is fine. Um, the beauty of mixed media is kind of just collecting all that stuff that you might have laying around or um, scraps of paper, art supplies you may have purchased and never had a reason to use. That's the beauty of mixed media. Um, so feel free to substitute anything. Um, we're going to work on a mixed media surface. So um, I'm working in my art journal. Uh, this is a journal where I've just done a lot of different things. Um, I like to work in a journal because it's nice and easy for me to store and I can always revisit things that I've done. Um, so I'm working on a 9 by 12 surface. You can work on anything you want. You can work on canvas, you can work on watercolor paper, mixed media paper, whatever you want. Um, I'm going to be working on a 9 by 12 size that just fits nicely on my desk. Hi Kim, it's nice to see you here. Um, okay, so you need a surface to create on. Um, the Peppermint Carol that we're doing, this is actually a scan and a printout of an old painting that I had done. Um, but tonight I'm going to redo this in mixed media. So in order to get these uh, light colors in the background, I will be using watercolors. So I've got a, a reddish, actually it's kind of a pinkish red and a green um, to use for my background. Now, if you don't have watercolor, you can use acrylic ink, which is a fluid acrylic paint, or you can just use acrylic paint and thin it down with water, and that will give you a nice transparent paint as well. Um, I have grabbed acrylic paint in red and green and black and white. Um, so I'll be using these four colors. Uh, I have a black Stabilo All Pencil. This is one of my absolute favorite mixed media supplies. I do know that uh, not everybody has one of these, so if you don't have this, um, you can use uh, charcoal. If you have a charcoal pencil or a charcoal stick, you can use that and it will give you a similar effect. Um, if you don't have either of those, you can just, I'm, I'm going to be using that for outlining. Um, so you can outline with a Sharpie, you can outline with a paint pen, whatever you want. Um, on the supply list, it says fluid or gel medium. Um, what fluid or gel medium is, uh, is acrylic paint with no pigment in it. And it's commonly used as an adhesive. So if you don't have um, a gel medium or fluid medium, you can use Mod Podge. It will do the same thing. Um, or you can even use um, Elmer's white glue and just thin it down a little bit with water. So that would also be a substitute as well. Um, Christmas Carol printables. So if you registered, um, you got a download with some printables and I just printed mine off uh, fairly small and I'm actually just gonna um, tear these and use them. Uh, if you don't have a printer available, you can find some old book pages that you're comfortable tearing up. Um, you can use anything with writing or printing on it to get the same effect, so you don't even have to use your printer. 
Uh, next, I mentioned a stencil or stamp with swirls. So on my original painting here, um, I've got these kind of white swirls. So tonight, since I'm doing mixed media, I'm going to be using a stamp. I had one that kind of reminded me of this. Uh, if you don't have a stamp, um, a stencil that's got some swirls going on would work as well. If you don't have either, you can paint those in with a paintbrush when we get to that step and some paint. So again, super flexible. Um, all right, and um, then I made a comment, some fun additions. So uh, black and white paint pens are awesome to use um, for embellishments. Um, gel pens also work really well for those fun little embellishments if you've got those. So those are optional. Um, Christmas washi tape, I don't know if I'm going to use mine, but I did pull some out. So uh, maybe we'll add some of that. Glitter paint, I'm a sucker for glitter. Um, if it's shiny, sparkly, or metallic, it's for me. So I pulled out some glitter paint just for fun. Um, anything else that you have that you might want to throw in here, you can do. So uh, think outside the box. Um, we'll be working with acrylic and watercolor. So you want water, paper towels, um, an old plate or a palette to put your paint on, um, paint brushes in various sizes. Uh, a heat gun or a hair dryer, uh, another, <laughs> yeah, yay ladies, glitter and sparkles. Um, a heat gun or a hair dryer will help you speed along the process if you want things to dry quickly, but that's optional as well. Um, tracer or carbon paper, that is if you want to, um, you got a printable with the candy cane. So if you want to trace this on or transfer this, you can do that. I think I might actually even cheat tonight. So I'm going to show you a super easy cheat if you're doing mixed media for um, this. So anyway, that was our very extensive supply list. I hope that you all have found um, fun substitutions. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to get these uh, music pages and I am going to start them uh, for the background and so what I'm going to do is I am going to tear these um, so that I've got some smaller pieces to work with. So I'm going to get rid of this white section. So if you're using the music um, you can decide how you want to use it. Um, but I'm going to cut mine so that it's uh, just kind of a small piece of the music. Um, if you've got book pages, you can just tear them however you want. Sometimes when I make mixed media, I work with larger sections and sometimes I like to work with really small pieces. Um, but that's kind of a personal preference, whatever you want to do. I'm probably just going to tear these up into fourths and glue them onto the paper like this. Um, if you're working perhaps on an eight by 10, it might make sense just to use, you know, one printed at full scale. Um, on other lessons, sometimes I even just um, put them up into very small pieces and I just have little small pieces glued everywhere. Really, we're just adding texture to this background. pretty easy there. Um, okay, so the next step that we need to do is adhere these on and we're going to adhere these kind of in two steps. Um, so the first step, uh, I am going to put glue right on my page and I'm going to paste these on and then the second step we are going to put a glaze over the top. Um, so I'm using gel medium. Um, the difference between gel medium and fluid medium is just the thickness. So gel medium is a thicker gel texture. Fluid medium is the exact same 
product, but it's in a fluid form. Um, I like mine to be more liquid, so I'm actually just going to pull mine out and add some water to it. And so this is where um, I said if you've got Mod Podge or if you've got Elmer's glue, you can even thin down your Elmer's glue a little bit and use that as well. Of course, when you're working with things like Mod Podge and Elmer's glue, it's not archival. But what I find, honestly, is that it'll last you a couple years and it'll look nice. And usually in a couple years time, I'm ready to make something new anyway, right? All right, so I want a nice fluid glue here, fluid adhesive. It doesn't need to be thin like water, but I like it to be nice and thin. Um, it's just easier to spread. Um, sometimes it does say fluid. Let me see. Um, yeah, so here's... Uh, this one says matte fluid medium. That's a good question. Okay, so this one says matte, I don't know how well you can see it. This says matte gel, and then this says matte fluid medium. So usually it's noted, um, and it's the exact same thing. Um, aside from adhesive, uh, that's a really good question. Aside from adhesive, um, the difference is um, you could add matte gel to a liquid, uh, for example, like I could add matte gel to this watercolor and it'll make a nice thick glaze. Um, I could add fluid medium to a heavy bodied paint and it would thin it down. So you can use these to make your paint thinner or thicker, um, but we're using them for adhesive today. So usually they are um, uh, marked matte or fluid, or I'm sorry, gel or fluid. Um, and then there's also another variation. So you can get this in gloss. So I have matte gel and matte medium. You can also have gloss gel and gloss medium. And those are the same things, um, but the difference is they're glossy instead of matte. So um, lots of options for the same thing there. Merry Christmas, Deanna. I'm in Ohio, it's cold here too, but today um, it was about 45 degrees, but tonight and tomorrow it's supposed to get down to like, I think the low is gonna be negative three, which is crazy cold for us. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna put a nice thin layer. And then I'm gonna glue on uh, the music sheet. Now right now I'm only doing the underside. Um, in order to adhere these properly, we're gonna wanna go over the top as well, but we're gonna do that in a separate step. So right now I'm just gonna glue the paper on. Um, they should have it at Joann's and Hobby Lobby. It's typically with, um, it won't be with the craft paint. It will be with the uh, fine art paint. Um, and it's usually, I know Hobby Lobby even has um, their own brand of it. Um, sometimes it just takes some digging. But like I said, Mod Podge, um, that's usually over in the craft section and that'll do just fine. Um, the only reason I sometimes recommend um, using uh, matte gel or, um, you know, like a, a major brand, um, like Liquitex or Golden is because it's going to be archival. But if these aren't things that you're gifting or things that you need to keep for, you know, 20 years, it really doesn't matter. I've used Mod Podge on many, many projects and I still have them and they still look fine.
All right, so get your papers all glued on there. I'm not gonna add a layer on top quite yet, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do for that. So anytime that you're using Mod Podge or adhesive to glue something in a mixed media piece, uh, you are gonna want to uh, make sure that you add the adhesive both under and over uh, the paper to make sure that it's sealed in properly. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a little bit of this um, gel medium and I'm going to separate it into two sections. So if you've got it on a plate, that's fine. It doesn't have to be in cups. I just had some cups here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip some watercolor in here um, and I'm going to start with just maybe like two drops. You don't need a lot. Uh, if you don't have watercolor, you can add in one drop of paint. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up and it should make a nice transparent glue. So I've used my watercolor to dye this glue. So when I add this over the top, it's going to seal it in and add color. So I'm going to do the pink first since I've got that mixed up. And then I am just going to find my halfway point. Uh, my papers are overlapping a little bit. Now remember here in the center, this is going to be covered. So right in the very center, I'm not too worried about being perfect. Um, but I'm just going to coat with this gel medium mixture, a nice pink section in the upper right corner. It really doesn't matter if you start with the left or start with the right, but I'm going to alternate. And so this is my layer of adhesive right over the top. And so this should seal that music page on. And then I'm going to come through and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a square right down the center for the lower left side. And you can control the transparency by how much paint you add to the mixture. So if I wanted this to be um, more opaque, I could add acrylic paint. I used watercolor, so it pretty much keeps that opaqueness or that transparency. Jeez, I get to talking and sometimes stuff just comes out of my mouth that doesn't make sense. There's a little bit of a glare there, but you can see it stays pretty transparent. And like I said, if you wanted to add some opacity, like I've got uh, an acrylic paint in pretty much the same color. Um, and this is where mixed media kind of is just fun. If I wanted to, you know, mix in some of that, I could, and that would change, you know, areas so that some were transparent, some were a little more opaque. Don't be afraid to play. This wasn't originally part of my plan, but I thought I would just get it out and show you. So you don't have to do that. If you like to see, you know, if you like it completely transparent, feel free to stick with it. There's no rules in art, no rules at all. All right, so I'm just gonna rinse out this brush here and I'm pretty much gonna do the exact same thing with my green. And I don't wanna mix my pink and green, so I'm making sure I get that all off my brush. If I mix pink and green, it's gonna make a brown. Oops, that 
is awfully transparent. I'm going to add a little more of this green. That's just really light compared to that pink. So you can play with your colors until you get what you're happy with. So again, I'm going to do the same thing over here. In those sections. My camera does not like when I put my hands in front of it. I need to figure that out. A few, oh, I would say about two weeks ago, my other computer just completely bit the dust. And so I got a new computer. I have the same camera, but I cannot find the setting for the webcam to keep it from automatically adjusting. I need to sit down and do that because that drives me crazy. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the pink and I'm just going to add a little bit of, I don't know, splotches of paint on here just to add some variation to that background. So some areas you'll see the words clearly and some you won't and I'm fine with that. complete for the background. Um, now I mentioned that um, I'm going to kind of cheat with my, my uh, peppermint here, but the first thing I need to do is dry this layer. So I'm going to mute myself and I am going to pull out my um, heat gun and I'm just going to zap this. Um, for the most part, whether you're using glue and water, Mod Podge, or um, the matte medium, um, it should dry fairly quickly. Um, if you don't have a heat gun or hair dryer, you can always just, um, you know, kind of wave a piece of paper over it if you need to speed along the process. But for the sake of this uh, video, I'm just going to mute myself and zap it. I'm mostly dry. Oh, you got you. You have their uh, Michael's 30% coupon. I have been missing their coupons. They almost got, totally got rid of their coupons, which is a super bummer. Um, but I always try to keep an eye out, but I guess I missed it. I'll have to take a peek. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these swirlies. You can add swirls however it works for you. I'm going to use a stamp and a stamp pad. Um, again, if you don't have a stamp or a stencil, you can always use a paint pen and draw it in. You can use paint and draw in your own swirls. That's absolutely fine. Um, on my original piece, I used white swirls. Today, I'm just going to go in here with these um, black ones. And so you can add them in whatever section you would like. I think um, for me personally, I'm going to add one up here in this pink section. Let's 
And then I'll add two down in this pink section. All right, now I'm using an archival ink, so um, I know that once this is dry, it's not going to lift again. It's permanent and waterproof. Um, if you use a stamp, pay attention to the ink that you use, because if you put anything over it, um, you might smear it. So if, um, you may need to test that. Um, I use waterproof, so I should be okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in... Uh, my branches. So I've got some uh, white branches coming out this way. And so I'm just going to go and get some white paint. And then if it helps you, uh, you can sketch the line of your, your branch. Um, sometimes it's helpful just to give yourself a visual there. You don't have to do that. Um, but I'm just going to take a small round and you want, for this, you want your paint to be somewhat fluid. So if you've got heavy bodied paint, just add a little bit of water to it. Um, if you're using paint like, um, deco art or folk art, it should be already pretty smooth. Um, but it makes it easier to make those little flicks of the wrist um, that we use for branches. So I'm going to start just by making the center of my branch. And then we're just going to make the pine bristles. So um, I'm just going to go across the top and flick, flick, flick. up and out, all the way down my branch. My first layer, I'm not really worried about it being perfect because I'm gonna come back with several layers on top. We're just kind of filling in some of that space. Right now my goal with these pine needles is just to cover most of that green. Once I get that accomplished, I am going to switch to a smaller brush. So this brush is just a little bit smaller and with this one I'm just going to be a little more intentional. Now I've got most of this filled in, I'm going to come back and just make some long thin uh, needles that poke out of here. And I just use a nice even stroke and as I pull it out um, I lift the end up just slightly. And that gives it a nice pointed bristle. I don't know what you call it. Bristle, needle, whatever it is. Sorry, I know I'm right-handed, so when I make things facing the left, I cover it up, but same process. It's just a quick flick 
and I am using light pressure and then lifting up as I get towards the end. Then I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I'm just going to use my medium round and add some white. As you can see, this is really rudimentary here. It's really that third layer that kind of bolts it up and makes it look like a branch. But we can start with a an elementary branch here. Just filling in some of that green space. And then I switch to my fine thin round here and that's when I can flick some of these larger pine needles out and make this look a little better. All right, so that's it for now for the white branches. Now we're going to make some green branches. And I'm going to start with my black paint because the center of these is going to be fairly dark. And so I did these in my green sections for my darker green branches. I am going to do those um, kind of right where uh, my colors meet. So I'm going to have a branch here. Um, I'm going to have one here. And you don't have to have it, you know, perfectly on those lines. We just want that, you know, kind of in that general direction. So maybe over here I could even have two. Uh, don't feel like you have to do exactly the same as I do. We're just adding some texture in here. And then maybe one down here. Um, and so I'm going to start initially with this black paint and I'm going to do my first layer of these little pine needles in black. I'm just going to go ahead and use my small brush for this. I don't want too much black. My white's a little wet, but that's okay. I'm just going right over the top of it. Um, if it mixes in, it mixes in. We're going to layer this, so 
I'm not too worried about it, even if it ends up just being a dark gray. I just want a nice dark color underneath. So that is layer one of our green branches. And I've got a fairly dark green. This is a hooker green, hooker's green hue permanent um, is what I've got here. Um, you could use a lighter green if that's your thing. This is light green permanent. Um, this one is fairly dark. I guess it's more like a pine color. Um, so I'm going to use it right out of the bottle for my first green layer and I'm just going to add a smidge of water to it. I want it nice and thin. Um, and then I'm going to go right back over these branches and I'm going to start filling in some of that space where we see the green or the pink underneath. Just quick flicks so that it looks like pine needles. I'm going to do all these sections. So do all of them, whether you have four or five little branches. Add the second layer of green on there. And just like the white branches, I am going to add a third layer of green. And so I'm going to add some white to this and lighten it up. And I'm going to add some of these light green uh, pine needles, but I'm not going to add quite as many as I did with the dark. So I'm going to use these as kind of highlights. So um, I'm going to use them to strategically kind of fill in some of that color. So maybe not quite as many as I did in the previous layers, but just adding some highlight in there so it's not all one color.
That focusing is driving me crazy. I really need to get that fixed. It's crazy how you just depend on your technology to work. You get it working the way you want it, and then as soon as you have to use something new or change it up, it's like totally back to square one. You forget how dependent you are on that to be working. All right, so I will lift this up to the camera so you can see what I've got going on here. So I had three layers of the white with only white, and then I've got these pine branches. I started with black, and then I used the green right out of the bottle, and then I used green mixed with a little white to add highlight. So that's where we are. All right. Um, before we move on to the next step, we are going to want this to be dry. So while this is drying, um, I'm going to tell you, you can do your candy cane and your bow two ways. Um, if you want to do the cheat, you can just print off that tracer and literally cut around it and just glue it on and paint right over the top of it. Um, because we are doing mixed media and we've got layers anyway, it's really not going to be that noticeable. So that is a super easy way to cheat. Um, I would say for the most part, like if you're making something to enter an art competition or, um, you know, maybe even to, to give as a gift or to, to keep forever and ever. Maybe you'd want to paint it. Um, I'm just making a fun little Christmas decoration, so um, I'm not worried about people judging me. So I don't, it wouldn't bother me if I just glued this on. So this is one way that you can, you know, instead of dealing with tracing or transferring, um, since we've got the adhesive and we've already glued on the layer, you can go ahead and glue this on and then we just paint over the top of it. And so you can just glue it right on there. Um, and then, hello, Georgia. We've got a lot of people from the South joining today. Yes, yeah, so you can cut this off and just glue it on if you want to. Um, you can use the transfer method. So if you have transfer paper available, um, like carbon paper, what you would do is just take that printable and then you would put your carbon paper um, shiny side down and then you would put your tracer over the top and then you would trace around it and that would transfer the image for you. So those are the two ways. If you don't have um, the carbon paper, sometimes it's called graphite paper, or transfer paper. If you don't have that, feel free to cut it off and glue it on. That's what I'm doing tonight. Um, it's a super easy cheat and when I'm done, nobody's going to know. So I don't even care. Like I said, this is not a fine art piece. This is a fun art piece. So I'm not overly worried about uh, cheating a little bit on this. So I'm just going to use some of this gel medium. I'm going to glue this right on the back. And this is my little fun shape. Yes, you do need to join more often. It's always nice to see you on here. All right, so it got a little curly. Sometimes that happens. I'm okay with that. All right, 
So I'm just going to glue that on. Um, if you're doing your transfer, you're just going to want to make sure that it's dry before you do it. I covered up a lot of my greenery at the bottom. That's okay. It happens. All right. I can always add some in later if I want. All right, so that's it, super easy. You know, I have the same problem as I see all those, I see so many fun art projects and crafts and I always, <laughs> I always save them and wanna do them and I never get to them. All right, so, um, that's that. If you wanted to just paint on your shapes, um, I'm just going to show you really quickly with a large paintbrush. Um, candy cane shape um, is super easy. You could just draw your candy cane. I would recommend painting that with white first. Um, I'm just going to break down these basic shapes in case you want to do them. I think most of you can handle the candy cane, right? That one's pretty basic. <laughs> um, for the bow, the basic shapes of the bow are obviously, you've got the round dot in the middle. For the large part of the bow, um, it's kind of like an M shape. So you go out, a little dip in, back up, and back down. Or a heart, I guess. An M or a heart. However, it makes it easy for you to sketch that in there. And then what I do um, when I draw these forked uh, tails is I just make two lines. And then you connect them with a V in the middle. So those are the basic shapes if you decide that you're going to paint this on your own. Uh, but since I cheated... Uh, I made this super easy on myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this uh, candy cane a nice coat of white so that I make sure all this black is covered up. Oh my gosh, every time I move my brush, that camera focuses. I am so sorry about that. I'm going to make that my goal to get that fixed after this is over. Don't worry about following my candy cane um, design too closely. It was just a sketch that I came up with, so you might be able to do it justice better than I did. Yikes, I pulled some of that red in there. Right, I'm just going to dry this white layer really quickly and then I'm going to switch to the red. All right, so to do these red lines, I'm gonna to switch to a nice thin brush. 
Um, I'm going to do the largest sections first. And when I do those, I'm just going to make sure that I cover up those black lines. Of course, I dried my white first because I don't want it to mix and make pink. I want my candy cane to be nice and red. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So large red stripes. Um, then I'm going to get a small round brush. And after I do the large stripes, that helps me determine where I need my small stripes to be. And so I'm going to come back through. I'm going to start with one small stripe. In my original, I had three. But I'm going to put one right in the middle. And then I can come back and add the other two. Or you can just leave one. Whatever you like. You can make your candy cane pattern however you want. All right, so there is our candy cane. The next thing I'm gonna do is this bow. I wanna change the red slightly. Um, so. What I'm gonna do um, is I am gonna take the same red that I had Um, I'm going to add a pinch of black and see what that does. I don't want to darken it too much, but I do want it to be just a little different. So I like that. It's kind of a shadowy red. So I'm going to paint the entire bow with this darker shade first. And it doesn't need to be drastically different. I just want it to be different enough that... It's not the same old boring color on everything. Now red is a naturally transparent pigment. So as I'm painting this bow, I can see the lines from the tracer and I'm definitely going to come back and hide those.
All right, so first coat on the bows. Make sure it's just nice and thick. We're gonna hide as much of that background as we can. I like that this is just a little bit darker. It kind of reminds me of those velvety bows that you can get on your Christmas stuff. All right, so in order to add a little fun in this bow, I'm gonna take some of this red right from the bottle and I'm gonna add that in, in some areas. So um, some of this is wet and that's fine. So I'm just going to put maybe just a little pinch up here by the corners of this pure red and then maybe pull a streak down in the tails, maybe a little bit up top. Just adding variation. Now I'm going to dip into some white kind of moving quickly because I want it to be blendable into that red. Uh, so I'm going to add a little white highlight up around these corners in as uh, towards the center as this uh, large part of the bow uh, forms this knot it gets pulled into some wrinkles so I'm going to pull some lines out from the center and as i do this i'm kind of being strategic about covering over any of those tracer lines that i see and then down here i might just add a highlight or two just for fun and then i'm going to come back with black and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add maybe some low lights in here or shadows, low lights, like I'm getting my hair done. I swear the things I come up with to say. So just pull on a few of those in there. Don't forget to add some to your little circle in the center. I forgot to do that with the white. So I'm going to come back and add some there. Alright. So there is my bow. So I added that darker red to start with to cover the entire bow. And then I added white, or I'm sorry, I added red right from the bottle. Just a few highlights on the large parts of the bow and then the tails. And then I used a thin brush to add in some wrinkly creases here towards the center and then just some highlights and shadows on the tail and the loop of the bow. All right, now we're gonna move into my favorite part and that is adding, um, an outline with a Stabilo All Pencil. So if you have a Stabilo All Pencil or a charcoal pencil, um, this part is really fun. If you don't have one, this part is optional, so you don't have to do it. Um, but before I move into that, I'm gonna make sure this is dry. So I'm gonna zap it with my heat gun. Um, I'm gonna mute while I do that, just so you don't have to hear the loud noise. And then I will be right back. If you don't have a heat gun, um, you can just you know, use a piece of paper and kind of blow some air around and that should speed up the process.
All right. So my candy cane and my bow is dry, um, as well as my little branches there. So what I'm going to do, um, and whether you're using a Stabilo awl or a charcoal, it works similarly. So the first thing I'm going to do is sketch around this outline. I really want this uh, candy cane and bow to pop off the background and be my focal point. So I am going to add a sketchy outline with this uh, Stabilo All pencil. Um, if you don't have either of these, some other substitutions, um, if you've got a watercolor pencil in black, that will also do the same similar thing. Um, if you've got gelatos, show you what those look like. Um, these will work in a similar way as well. Uh, what else? Um, Tim Holtz uh, Ranger makes distress crayons, distress pencils. Those will also work in a similar way. So I've got my outline there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this gel medium um, I want to turn it into fluid medium. I want it to be really uh, watery. So I'm just going to add some here right in the lid and then add a little water to it. So I'm going to get this nice and fluid, nice and watery. And what this is going to do is it's going to activate uh, that, uh, that Stabilo All or that charcoal and it's going to seal it in. So that's why I use um, the medium instead of just using water. If I just use water, it'll activate it and it'll look good, but it won't be sealed, so it'll be smudgy. So by using this glue, what happens is it activates it, but then it also seals it. So you can see, as I start to go over this edge, how it activates it and it gets nice and bright and smudgy. And I love that look. So there you have it. I really like how that makes the um, the outline pop. It really makes that that bow and that candy cane stand out from that background. And we've got kind of a busy background, so I like that look. Um, like I said, if you don't have the any of those uh, black smudgy 
options. You can always outline with a Sharpie or um, a paint pen if you want that look, or you can leave it without the outline. Totally up to you. Um, from here on out, it's really just uh, kind of whatever fun additions you want to add. So um, one of the things I had in my original uh, were some berries. So I'm going to add maybe some red berries in this oops, white uh, branch here. I should have gotten new paint because this is dried and gloppy. When I do things like berries or these extra little additions, I just try to remind myself, um, make sure they're not evenly spaced. Your eye looks for patterns um, and make sure they're not um, the same size. Just add a little variation. Tends to look more natural. So I'm just gonna paint those in. I'll let those dry. Um, and then maybe go back and add a little highlight. I pulled out some glitter paint, so now might be a fun time to get that out. I don't think I've opened this since last Christmas <laughs> because I don't know when I would use red glitter. I'm going to plop some of this on my bow because I like glitter. I had considered, I have a nice pink iridescent glitter. I had considered using that for the background um, and adding that over the pink. That's an option. This is kind of the point in the mixed media where you get to pull out whatever you have and make it yours, make it your own. So if you are adding anything fun, let me know in the comments. While I'm finishing up here, I'm going to give myself a shameless plug. Um, I had a goal for 2022 on reaching a certain amount of Facebook page likes. So if you have not yet liked me on Facebook, I would love it if you would look me up. Um, I am Painted Cicada on all the social medias. Um, so my web address on Facebook is facebook.com slash Painted Cicada. Um, I would love it if you would give my page a like. I'm just um, a couple hundred away from meeting my goal for 2022. So I would love it if you'd give me a like and consider giving me a share. You don't have to do that. Um, all the YouTubers say that, right? Subscribe and share or like and share. Um, so that is my shameless plug. I would love it if you would do that. Um, I'm going to keep adding my doodles here. So using my paint pen, I'm going to add some highlights to these berries. Use my black and add a little shadow. For the most part, I feel like I am finished. When I work in a journal, I like to add tape on the edges.
So that is it for this peppermint carol lesson. I cannot wait to see what you create. Um, I hope that you'll consider sharing it with me. Um, if you are not already, um, I have a group on Facebook where you can share your art, both the things that you create with me and things that you create on your own. Um, the group is called uh, Painted Cicadas Art and Share. You can look it up by a, a Facebook search or you can type this address in your address bar, facebook.com slash groups slash painted cicada group and it will take you there um, you can share your work with me that way or you can tag me at painted cicada on the socials and I will see it so um, don't be afraid to tag me and let me know how yours turned out uh, what kind of special things you did to make this your own whether it's doodles or um, different colors or whatever. I love to see what people create. So I hope that you will share with me and keep an eye out. I am actually just finishing up all my January stuff and I'm getting that posted. I've got my January calendar posted on Facebook and I'm going to be getting that posted on my website as well. So check that out and come back and create with me soon. Thank you so much for joining. I cannot wait to see your version of Peppermint Carol. Have a great night, everyone.